Greetings. My name is Joe Bob, and I am very P. Welcome back to Mask of the Road. Let's get right into it then, shall we? Alright. Let's go talk to the Landau, see if they have anything interesting to say. Let me just put on the badge, as I'm here to take the census, ostensibly. Let's go. We've never met before, but I recognize these people anyway, from Archie's description. They have to be the Landows. Or, is that how you pronounce it? I forget. The brother and sister pair. He's been treating David's stomach pain. Wait, Rachel. Oh, wait here, Rachel. Or you can stand a bit to the side if you want. Wherever you're comfortable. I'll speak to this person. It won't take long. Couldn't, anyway. Good morning. Introduce myself as a friend of Archie. Kiddo. I have the advantage, I'm afraid. I know of you through a friend of mine. The young doctor, Archibald Raid. Bride. Whatever. He and I reside at the same lodging house. David does not comment on this. Did Dr. Raid send you to us with some sort of message? I suppose I shouldn't call him doctor, as he didn't qualify. He knows we're here, but I don't know what the message would be. We paid his fees. No, no, I'm here on my own business, but he told me you might be here. What can we do for you? Let's see. Hey there. The Ministry of Accounting and Recounting have asked me to work on the census. I see. I'll answer your question, kiddo. If you answer mine, call it character research. Are you having peculiar dreams down here? <laughs> Suggest that this whole thing is a peculiar dream. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting one. Frankly, I'm still waiting to wake up from a nightmare I had months ago. Sorted business with bats. Yes, I can just see Lord Herodot Chinless making such a jest. I thought we, we'd agreed you wouldn't be making more use of the Chinless dynasty. What? We did say that, but the readers keep writing to see more of them. Go ahead here with your questions, kiddo. Uh, that's what she means about character research. What did you mean when you said you had a question about character research? I write novels. They are published, one chapter at a time, in the Lily of London magazine. Oh, I'm a writer myself. Uh, I publish my sto uh, stories, one chapter at a time, on Archive of Our Own. <laughs> I was in the midst of one when the fall happened. My publisher insisted that I continue the story, despite all. Yeah, people like a bit of stability in these troublesome times. Rachel, are you certain you want to share so much? Does it matter? Surely those precautions are behind us. Let's see, that's what her story is about. What are you writing about? If you take the Lily of London, kiddo, you may have the pleasure of reading my next chapter yourself. Though I confess I'm at a standstill as to what it will contain. My heroine was meant to set off for Paris and there to be reunited with her lost beloved. But as the fall has transpired in fiction as well as in fact, I must resign myself that the courtship is ruined. Mock Rachel, show no sympathy. Bloody hell. That's it, that's about our inspiration to be a novelist. What inspired that choice of occupation? It was Yom Kippur, many years ago. Our family gathered to break the fast. My Landau cousin was at one side of the table, my mother on the other. The little Landaus, so devout, Scandalizing my mother with, she would say, their low manners. My mother in turn scandalizing the Landau by seeming so almost English with her lax views on Kashrut. 
each side unaware of how horribly it was affronting the sensibilities of the other. In such a moment, you either retire to your room to compose a savage ro roman a clef, or you throw open the window, lean out, and scream. I know that feeling. Those are the only possibilities. Uh, I remember many a time in my youth throwing open a window and throwing myself out of it. Of course, I lived on the first floor. In fact, we didn't have a second or third floor. <laughs> we did have a fourth, though. <laughs> no. Uh, so, it wasn't much of a drop. I was a, a, just, yeah. Many a time, I just escape out my window. Mm. Those are the only possibilities. Rachel does herself an injustice. She writes with real sympathy. As do I. Although not for the usual suspects. You haven't always described it that way. I simply wish you would draw less extensively from life. I mean, someone has to be sympathetic to those that people would rather just condemn. Without that. Anyways. Power the mood somewhat. That'd be a bit rude. Uh, sure, you look right to the chance to flirt. It's always a good time to flirt. Who else belongs to your household? Are there others as handsome? Our home contains myself, my brother, and our housekeeper. It isn't a grand establishment. We had another housekeeper for many years, but she passed away, and Phoebe, our servant, had lost her place with a neighbor of ours. Let's see. Ask whether David has any romantic commitments currently. <laughs> Use the question of the chat to flirt. Again, always. Are you married or otherwise promised? Oh, not recently. I was in love once, or so I imagined. Charlotte Carringham. She and David had an understanding. She converted, in any case. Converted? Oh, to Christian. Becoming Christian suited her social aspirations. Rachel. Yes, yes. I take leave to dislike your unworthy suitors as heartily as you dislike mine. Milton is a yellow-eyed, flash-dressed, hot-handed creature at least two decades too old for my sister. Rumors of devils are frequent in the city. Perhaps Milton is one of them. I hardly think he and Charlotte are comparable. <laughs> uh... The two certainly take a keen interest in each other's love life. I've heard that's a common thing for siblings and such. Although I've never enc uh, encountered that. Not that I have any siblings, mind. But I had people that were analogous at points here and there. Well, maybe not. Uh, but yeah, there's a joke. There's a joke here to be made about them being keen on each other's love life. Perhaps they've got an interest more than just familial. But there's no reason to think that just yet. <laughs> Hint for more information about Rachel's unsuitable friend. Oh dear. The rules of polite society have broken someone in the fall, haven't they? Nothing of the sort. He's a devil, or rather, he belongs to the group using that name. <laughs> Indeed, they call themselves devils, but I, and they do bear a lot of striking similarities to the, to the demons of the Bible. But first of all, there, there's no such thing as like devils. Well, there might be multiple. But generally, there's accepted to, uh, to just be one, or maybe a handful, of the of creatures that could be referred to as de uh, as the devil. Mm. Now, Satan—that might be multiple people, but the devil, I'm fairly certain, is just one. 
people always do, people tend to like you refer to like the devils or whatever, but what they're actually talking about is demons, who are not a separate species from angels, like seem people seem to think. Nor are they uh, humans that went to hell. They are simply fallen angels, just angels that are that rebelled against God and are trapped within hell. You know. In fact, they are as much prisoners of hell as the people that go there. But, uh, but yeah, regardless. Milton is an artistic inspiration. If you are not a writer yourself, kiddo, you cannot guess how much the fall has disrupted our sort of work. Characters have certain tastes, certain preferences, certain prejudices. All I need to do is imagine them in new circumstances, and their reactions write themselves. But now, We've all been at least a little cra a bit cracked by the fall. How does anyone behave? Who can say? You always said you wrote for observation. You can still observe. Since the fall, there's no pattern in what I see. It is only home that makes sense to me, and I cannot make my whole novel about a brother and sister lighting candles at Shabbat. Well, I don't know. There's certainly merit to that. Just... A whole novel about just a brother and sister dealing with the re repercussions of the fall in their home. Dealing with the madness that bounds. Perhaps finding love with each other or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Ask why not out of curiosity. Yeah. Why not? My publisher won't to uh, wouldn't tolerate it. The Lily of London wouldn't print it. The rest of the world must come into it somehow. Milton helps me sort the rest of the world. I can make sense of anything, even a, a Viscountess running down the street in her... Ignore. I don't know how to pronounce that. It's easy to understand a misbehaving Viscountess. Everything else is stranger. Let me say, kiddo, Milton smokes rose-scented cigars. He helps me. You've encouraged David to further gossip. <laughs> uh, why not? Goodness, really? Milton quotes poetry instead of making conversation. Ugh, how pretentious. What does that signify? Pretentiousness. Milton carries in his breast pocket a jar of honey with a tiny spoon. Well, that's not that big of a surprise. I do that. Well, not regular honey. Crist uh, the honey I carry around is partially crystallized. The, which is the best kind of honey. Like, if you just had, like, fully crystallized honey, like a whole jar of crystallized honey, it would be... T uh, it would be too intense. What you want is to have, like, crystal honey at the center coated in liquid honey. That's the best way to eat it. It's just a shame that honey takes so fucking long to crystallize. Months at times. Uh, the best kind of honey for that is, basically, you want as much, uh, you know, the honeycomb and beeswax and such in it as possible. You don't want it to be... Ah, what's the term? You don't want you you don't want it to be processed honey. Like, I mean, it's been like really. Uh, you want it to be you want it to be as granular as possible, as greeny as possible rather. Plenty of men of fashion behave that way. I can say right now, no, they don't. <laughs> I turn my senses curiosity on Rachel. Let's see. Are you married, or otherwise promised? Are you in love? No, I wouldn't say that. Milton is only a friend. Just as well, too. In the times before, you would never have darkened the door of such a person. That wasn't- like, what- I haven't been doing any flirting this whole time. What the heck are they- are they, are they talking about? What? Whatever. So you turn the subject to his life and business. With a ready listener, David talks about the life he had before the fall, and hopes to have again. 
there was a steady business, which presented him with challenges in which his caution and tendency to doubt were an asset. And his tendency to doubt were an asset. Uh... In his stories, his partners and relatives are sometimes swindled or tricked, but David himself rarely falls prey to that kind of misadventure. Attaboy. His arrangements appear to have been quietly successful, and I have the impression that his friends thought highly of his good sense. A real skeptic, so to speak. Good man. We are expected elsewhere. Everything is always running too slowly, and yet every day is the same. You set loose one or two ideas. Which I certainly owe you something. She produces a card and hands it to me. It provides her address and guidance to reach it. A well-appointed townhouse, suffused with a homely glow from its tall windows. Home of the Landau siblings. Oh yeah, I had a townhouse in London, in fallen London. Uh, I used it to, I turned it into an orphanage. I sunk a lot. I sunk an enormous amount of money into that orphanage. <sighs> Goodbye then. All right. Ah uh, yes, Mr. Pa uh, Mr. Pages fought over Milton and then wrote a novel. <laughs> <sighs> Somehow I doubt that. Milton fought over Milton and wrote a novel. <laughs> hmm. Where to go now? CB. Wait, who is CB? Well, I guess I'll find out. Oh, right, the maid. Of course. Uh, uh what a voice giver. Are you, are you... Are you here to see me, then? I don't receive visitors, as a rule. But perhaps they won't take official notice. It's not as if I entertain much. All right. The Ministry of Accounting and Recounting have asked me to work on the census. Phoebe looks faintly mutinous. <laughs> Let's see if I'm actually going to be doing any actual flirting this time. Tell me you're not married, Phoebe. My heart couldn't bear it. Yeah, see, that's flirting. I'm not married. It's not easy when you're in service. Oh, shit. The household might not like you having gentlemen callers. Silence falls. <laughs> Alright, I guess I... Oh, sorry. Have a good afternoon. I should take myself off. Alrighty then. Might as well wear my badge to the table. Uh, I thought I, I thought I smelled a stew. The pot's on the table, kiddo. Sit where you like. Huh. What? What's in it? If you judge just by the flavor, it'll be a chewy type of fish. Makes a change for mushrooms. That goes for you too, Miss Griselda. There's a stew ready if you're hungry. Let Griselda say whatever she's burning to say. You went fishing? It was a gift from someone I treated for gripe. Masters warned me against eating things from the river. I'm not sure it was the river he caught it from. Man, that was the wrong voice. Whatever. What? Why? What did he tell you? He didn't tell me anything. <laughs> Complain that the person is protecting a food source. He has a good spot to fish. Most likely he means to give it quiet. Wouldn't want to share, would he? That might be it. Hmm. 
He had the meat in a big bag. A very big bag. And the stain dark. Ah, I can never keep her voice straight. I don't know how to do a, like, kind of motherly sort of voice. I made him swear it wasn't human before I'd take it. To judge by the fishy smell, it wasn't. And also by the tentacles. <laughs> well, you never know. No one speaks for a minute. Wait a minute, did he kill a rubbery man? I mean, that that's a murder, you know. I chew diligently. What an odd <laughs> adjective. What an odd thing. Yeah. We finish eating. Okay. Well, I didn't get much done. But yeah, I've got four census pages. If I get just a couple more, I can do this and also pay off the rest of the back rent. Right. Nine days remain in the season of confession. Another morning, another newspaper. Oh, and I just remembered, I forgot to recollect. Wait, that doesn't, that's a re really weird sentence. Morning uh, lies open on the table. Her Majesty's Palace shuttered. Royal family remains unreachable. I'm not too occupied otherwise, I can always ask my friends and acquaintances whether there's anything they need from me. They have some additional tasks for me. Indeed. Alright, recall the past. There we go. We got to do that. I reach for another memory out of that jumbled grab bag. There are things that I sometimes remember from that night that cannot have happened. Bustle things. Let's see, Archie. I think Grizz did say something about our family name. But Grizz was eating a cold dinner. It wasn't a hot one that night, but Horatio was determined that we had to eat. Grizz and I have been have both been lodging at Horatia's since before the fall, but at first we didn't speak much. She kept her distance back then. She's become much friendlier since Judgment Day. No questions are lighting the stove today, I'm sorry to say. Did you say stove? I found a few things in the larder. Those few things would be worth a fortune now. She had the end of a loaf of bread, a roast joint we hadn't finished, a cheddar with the wax covering still on. The jellied eels barely been touched. Plenty to go around. In fact, I think Grizz mentioned her family briefly. Uh, while we were eating, a joking reference. Must be a bad night in the Everly household. They don't like eating alone. Guests always. But I doubt anyone is paying supper for this today. Alright. See where, whether David needs anything is in both of these places. That's a bit odd. Let's see. See whether Archie needs anything. That's it. Archie and I know that this other too well for any minor eccentricities of dress to surprise him. I may still have my own preferences of which should appear, however. I should change. Nope, not that. Definitely shouldn't change my face. Ah, there you are, my dear. There's nothing more attractive than working secretly alongside someone, knowing that you and I alone know what we're up to. Hey, well, not precisely alone. And your publisher, I suppose. I've not met the publisher. Perhaps he is also very attractive. Oh, he's not. Trust me in this. The air is warmer for just a moment. Briefly comforting. Have you heard the proposal to drill some new wells? 
We need more fresh water that doesn't come out of the stolen river. The first machine they put to it, it struck on something in the ground red as a side of beef, and the ground screamed. Be curious to see what's there, but the ministry has blocked all the roads around the spot. Yeah. Now there was a trickle of blood that was running down the street, and two or more enterprising butchers gathered it in cups to make their pudding. To make it a pudding. Yeah, wells are not a rarely uh, pleasant sort of thing around here, or anywhere really. I meant to ask you whether there's anything I can help you with. I did not need anything. But have you been to the basement? Hershia says the rest down there have learned to read. She says she doesn't want us going down there. Conclude there's something not right with Hershia. Determined to figure out what's going on. I'm glad you told me. I'll see if I can't get to the bottom of it. The thing in the basement. Make the beast use a wick or two. That's my advice. See if they cannot take to an, ed to an ed education. For a no one speaks. Declare my love for Archie. Seems a bit. I have feelings for you. There's all sorts you know about me, but I keep thinking of things you not told me. Oh? Well? What sort of family did you grow up with then? Mother like mine? How is that what you mean to do next? Yeah, I don't care to remember them. There's some that have that luck. I'm sorry. There's an A accounting for the distribution of parents in life. I've been thinking about you. And about how I mean to go above again as soon as I may. Yeah, I'd come with them. In a heartbeat. I'd go up with you if you want. Would you then? But when we got above, you'd have your own people to find. Do not want to come north with me. Yes. I have no one waiting for me up there. Well, no one I want to return to anyhow. I shouldn't be glad to hear that for your sake. So see, there's no reason I couldn't come with you. I like the idea better than most. I don't like living solitary, to speak the truth. I always feel like uh, feel I'm missing someone. Perhaps I hadn't met them yet. That seems a bit, uh, uh, a bit extreme. I mean, I barely know him. Can I make Archie's detail here, I think. He always finds a mystery in everything, even things that might be perfectly explicable. He also does his best to help where he can. Yeah. That's where I want to be myself. Okay, so this is about the, uh... Ah. That certainly sounds interesting. Risha won't mind me at least. Okay. But will the rats? I tiptoe down. Horatia is distracted in the kitchen. No one else is paying attention. At first, it seems as though there is nothing to see. No lurking creatures or surprising supplies. The things on the shelves are just what I'd expect. But, ah, something is wrapped around my ankle. Something has half recognized me. It speaks of the sun, cruel and furious. The sun, rejecting, cold in the dark, no heat at all. London spread out like a coverlet. London spread out like a coverlet, reassuring stifling its spire overlooking the city its spire oh, not its its servants hooded then just as quickly it withdraws I am refused I am not Horatia it expected something from her it did not receive it from me the tentacle is gone and there is only an empty hole in the wall well, that wasn't a rat at all. It isn't long until dinner is served. 
served a vast kitchen. That's not concerning in the slightest. Eat up, Archie. Aren't you always warning us about lack of nutrition? Ugh, I'm sorry, Horatia. You cooked it as well as anyone could do. No need to tell me that. What are you brooding on, then? Just thinking on my mother. If she thinks I was killed, it'll be terrible for her heart. Yeah, find out the good he's doing here for someone else's mother. Someone else is probably on the surface, worried sick about their mother in London. Someone that maybe you're helping here. David Landau's relatives are on the surface. There's no one here but his sister and some distant cousins. There you are then. Say I get out of this hole in the ground at last and all the way back up to Glasgow and find she's past her grief before I get there. <laughs> Positively Greek. I've told you before. You should ask Grizz to help you. Ah, that was the wrong voice. I should ask you before- uh, I told you before. You should ask Grizz to help you. Ask me for what? I've told you before. I can't set off the masters. You can't be doing little favors here and there and everywhere. You know how many people live in London? No, my duck. I don't. Nor do you either. Or you wouldn't need this census. My mother begged me to come- not to come all the way to London. She said I could study just as well in Glasgow. Or if I had to go away, then nay further than Edinburgh. There's plenty of physicians there, training. It was me that chose to put the distance. Ask why Archie came so far from home. Why'd you do that, then? Your mother is a saint. The kind that suffocates you. Not that I mean to say a word against her. She went through a great deal with my father at that. He was nay saint, not by a long chalk. No one speaks for a moment. I chew diligently. There are no more mushrooms on my plate. All right then. Of course, her, uh, yeah, Grizz's ap ap apologia when it comes to the masters is quite grating. It's like, oh, they can't do little favors here for Londoners here and there. First of all, yes, they can, and so, they definitely have it within their means. And second of all, a w uh, if they actually, you know, cared about the people of London, they would, uh, they, they would. They would be developing some method of getting them back to the surface. But they don't. They really, really don't. Even though, there e even though I know for a fact that there are multiple ways to the surface that they have access to. But, th but that certainly wouldn't suit their purposes, now would it? Another morning, another newspaper. Archie brought, uh, bought one, and the headlines read, With the very least, they could bring people down from the surface to here, Trev. Renowned scientist pronounces recent events result of volcanic activity, sun veiled in ash. Right. I'm an auto occupied otherwise, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said that already. Ah. Under the recollection. I reach for another memory out of that jumbled grab bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw something in the corner of the basement. I remember waking up in the night and seeing that there was a new rat hole in the basement wall. And as I lay there gazing at it, it came something like the leg of an octopus from that hole. I mean, the tentacle of an octopus. It felt about the floor of the basement, and wrapped itself around a lump of coal, finding nothing else handy. But that displeased it, it seems, because it dropped the lump again and withdrew. When I summoned the courage to look into the hole, I saw nothing. I could not be sure that I saw it truly. It served an eldritch purpose.
Third is, third is the pleasure of a creature overseeing London, a creature who's reach extended under buildings and through, through the land of the Nath. Broke the typical Londoner somehow. True, although not in the way it's. Oh, that's it. Collected love story. Well, Mr. Pages huh, was compelled by an inhuman creature to gather whatever love stories it could from London. That's actually true. Alright then. Perhaps I should bring this to Archie. Had unknown, had both purpose both unknown and unknowable. <laughs> That's not helpful in the slightest. Yeah, okay. Okay then. Yeah, let's bring this to Archie. We're getting closer to the truth now. You're yeah, a welcome sight. I am so glad you and I chanced to lodge in the same house. It was a kindness of fate. We fall into banter and we do not quickly recover. We turn to the price of mushrooms, the difficulty of finding fuel. These are the subjects that people discuss in the Nath, in order to avoid talking about teeth and snakes and the occupants of our dreams. <clears throat> Tell Archie about the tentacular thing ruling the Nea. There's a tentacled creature spread under the Nea. Mr. Pages serves its will rather than it serving him. Ugh, oh, there's a thing. I shouldn't say it, but I like the notion of Mr. Pages dancing on a string. Tell him about the pre its presence in our basement. He won't like this part, however. One of its legs reaches to our own basement. I tell him the rest, what I saw, what it said to me. That was a dangerous experiment, but I cannot blame you. I might have tried the same. Another fine piece. I was saving this for ingredients, but I'll more than get it back. Let's see. Let's see a little bit more how I'm feeling towards Archie, but how much he occupies my thoughts, and how I miss him when we're apart. He has a few observations along those lines himself. Who do you miss most from the surface? Uh, hmm. Someone I loved, but not... I want to say that, but... I, don't, I think it might interpret that as romantic love. I'm talking more of a... Oh, I can always load. Uh, talking more about familial. It was a matter of the heart. Hey, well, suppose I knew you had a life before the fall. No, yeah, no. It's clearly how I was talking about. <laughs> like what? Uh, yeah, whatever. Apologize for not wishing to speak of it. I'm sorry, it's best I don't say. It's nothing that concerns you. If it did, I would tell you. Ugh, I only wish to get a better sense of you. I miss my own people, but I remember them less well than I'd like. Yeah. Well, I give Archie a provocative look. Ah, well, I guess I didn't kiss him then. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Why was there an exclamation mark here? Yeah, I don't know. Okay. I guess I should bring the rest of the... the rest of these to him. Wait, hang on. Hmm, 
be more efficient to do that. But then if I do that, I can get, I can pay off the back rent. I don't know. Oh, whatever. Ooh. Question, Mr. Page, about Missy Theories. Well, Grizz is there. No, I don't want her play interference. Well, actually. Hmm. Yes, I quite like to question him about it while she's not there, but I don't know if I can actually do that. Oh, whatever. I'll provide him with the sense of sports. Well. It, rather. <laughs> but him suffices. <laughs> Not to show you with that. Grizz has already shown me once how to visit the ministry. Nonetheless, this time I want to make sure I visit while she's also there. So I invite myself to accompany her when she, uh, when she walks to work. We require, we require more story for the bazaar. Our current catalog is too small. Too small? Far too... Uh, far too... Uh, <coughs> far too small. We have all the romantic accounts from the census. Too short. Too self-similar. person was married, then widowed. A person fell in love, was rejected, m and married another. Where is the screaming in such an account? Turn the moment to humor. They are English, Mr. Pages. When they wish to scream, they say that they were quite put out. Besides, if you want more colorful stories, there are the novels. Anand's novels have been disappointing. Uh. Imply Mr. Pages has led poorly. <laughs> it sounds as though Mr. Pages has not guided the ministry well. Some other city should have been fifth. Manners in Paris are said to be more exquisitatious. <laughs> oh, now that's an interesting sentence. Now what do you mean by that, Mr. Pages? What could that possibly mean? Some other city should have been the fifth. Ah. Hmm. One hates to take, take sides against a friend. Alas, I am forced to conclude that Mr. Pages has not gone about its remit effectively. Similar, uh, singularly inefficient, as a matter of fact. You do not how, uh, know how I am obstaposed. Demands are made, resources withheld, colleagues Macarodiant. Macarodiant, rather. Do you have anything more? Wah, wah, wah. Cry me a stolen river. And over everything at once? Yeah. I go head over one by one. Mr. Pages pays. Then it puts the census page in a stack of others, much like it. It weighs the stack down with a paperweight. If I look too hard at the paperweight, my eyes sting. This one is of, of interest. Familiar, familiar face it. Lacking auxiliary. I don't have a filing index for that combination. I will designate a sigil and a suitable ink. The colors on the last sigil burn my eyes. Do you have anything more? All right, I go on Rachel. This form merits two pennies. It looks through the sheets of the form in its, un in its usual way. It doesn't find too much to interest it in the account of Rachel's romantic life. It is much more intrigued by her employment. She invents love stories from nothing. Well, not from nothing, no. But from, uh, but from her own mind, yes, and observation. There are any number of novels printed every year in London. The price of paper was recently reduced. These stories we will acquire. If they are suitable, then we will also acquire the authoress. Frown. I frown. Excellent. Try not to irritate, please, Captain. Do you have anything more? 
Alright, there's David. I've got used to the transaction now. Timothy cares for his sister more than for any other. Nonetheless, his affections are prolific. There's some promise in that. Do you have anything more? Go on, the maid. I can take my penny without flinching under its stare. There are seven forms thus far. Yes! Okay, so the first three I gave did count for that quest. Good. I was counting on that. This should be commemorated. Grizz has suggestified that the agents of the ministry should appear respectable. Moreover, that black is a respectable color of clothing. I have obtained an article. It was not made with Mr. Vale's wares. I hope this will not give offense. No, quite the opposite, in fact. Mr. Vale should not be given the measure of you. Indeed. Black coat, suitable for funeral processions and the attendance of graves. Wearing it makes me more conscious of grim truths, but also better able to lend comfort. Nothing suits me like a suit. She seems a very small person. More like a dog. Oh, oh, the maid. What a horrid thing to say. You would not agree? No! You do not think she is smaller than yourself? I... that's not... I will not replicate the statement in the future. See that you don't. Thank you, I suppose. That is enough of my official duties for the moment. You will go home now. I render my thanks and good wishes to all parties. And bow myself out. Quite sarcastically, in this case. Uh, the hallways outside are hushed, except that if I listen closely, there's a sound like something walking with an uneven gait. Its shoes, or perhaps its toenails, click on a polished floor. Horatio will be setting out the food now. Alright. Here we go. That's quite something. The coat looks sober and the ministry badge look, looks official. That brings out a touch of briny authority. <laughs> Startlingly vulgar, oh my. Alright. Don't have much of a wardrobe at the moment. Oh, who the fuck is this? Reverend Withernick, a pleasure to see you. Are you well? In tolerable health, I'm glad to say, Mrs. Chapman. And you? I think I am not acquainted with all of your lodgers. Gamble that Theophilus shares my sense of humor. I go by kiddo. Theophilus Withernick. It is a Yorkshire name. Human at that. Born of a woman, lived under the sky. If you can't say the same, at least break the horrible truth to me gently, will you? <laughs> If you've come up if you've come about blankets, I've already brought everything I had spare. No, this is on a more serious matter. Just after morning prayer, I was approached by a woman, and not for the first time. Break in and tease him. <laughs> yeah, it's an obvious joke to be made there. Oh shocking! Approached and by a woman For a second, or dare I say, even a third time. I'm sure you could quite the catch in the parish, Reverend Withernick. No, no! This woman had no amorous intent. She was a deviless. She had yellow eyes and her touch burned like fire. She did not try to hide what she was. Did she have anything to hide? Oh. Maybe she did not think that an illness would be taken as a sign she'd come from hell. My dear woman, she asked for my soul. She asked for my very soul. Riff on the amusing implications. Is it possible you misheard? Perhaps you were a cobbler concerned with your footwear. Maybe she had mistaken you for a fishmonger. <laughs> there are contextual indications, kiddo, that she, uh, she intended neither of those things. <laughs> Maybe hell is here, in the depths of the earth. A strange notion, considering how cold it is here. Well, depends on on what uh, mythology you've read. I mean, the whole thing with... Uh, I mean, according to Dante's Inferno, the deepest layer of hell is 
is cold. It's a uh, ice that's kept frozen from the eternal beating of Lucifer's wings. Thus, he, uh, thus the very thing that it, uh, Lucifer's very attempts to escape are what sustain his prison. If he ever, if he ever stopped trying to escape for long enough, he would be free. A bitter irony. The devilish wish visits you. You must refuse her anything she asks, unless, unless she's a just asking for the time or something. It does not sound as though she was offering much of an inducement. It does not sound as though she was offering much of an inducement. Not yet. She asked me what I most needed. I fear the consequence. Beware of those yellow-eyed creatures. Grant them nothing they ask. St. Alvin was the first English martyr, a point of considerable pride of the local vicar. It's the church of our parish. I chew diligently. Alright. That done. And I got this spiffy suit. In the process. Alright. Seven days remain in the season of confessions. Hmm. That, uh, what an auspicious number. Oh. Headlines today read, Parliament buildings visible in river. All parliamentarians fear drowned. Our revelations don't enjoy any more prominent position than they did the last time. But if I read closely, I can see a doubt about the Master's implicit in many articles. If I'm not too occupied otherwise, I can always ask my friends and acquaintances whether there's anything... Yeah. Whatever. Alright. Ready to hand in. What? What do you mean ready to hand in? I thought I already handed it in. All right then, that's enough for today. So yeah, we discovered a vast tentacular creature underneath London. I suspect that the masters are working for it. I don't know about the, that specifically, but I, but the, a vast creature that has been throughout London that the masters are serving certainly does exist. Oh yeah, let's uh pay the rest of what I owe her before we go. I'll take out the badge. <laughs> I'm indebted to Horatia. I will not be for long. Since the fall, I haven't always had the funds to pay for my own room and board. She provided for me anyway. If there's anything to eat, I'm always welcome to join the other lodgers. She's never said a word in front of the other guests. Kiddo, it's good to see you. I remember how you fed us all dinner the night of the fall. A cold collation, but a delicious one. No point living through the end of the world on an empty stomach. We turn to the supply of gas and oil. They're the favorite pastime, speculating how much of these commodities the masses have in store, and where they could have come from. And what will happen when night falls entirely. Hmm. For some, that is a terrifying thought. For me, it is a comfort. No, not even- not just comfort. It is my... ambition, you could say. To see that night falls entirely, and not just here. Here, you're owed this. Horatia gives my shoulder a squeeze. I'm grateful you gave me so long. It's, it's what we do here. Alright. There was a brief lull in the conversation. Alright. Goodbye. I'd best go tidy the parlor. Yeah. 
I grin. This time to win the third. Yeah, of course. Alrighty. That's a good place to stop for today. Like I said, you know, we discovered that weird tentacle stuff. We did we had some more conspiracies regarding the masters. Speaking of which, nah, she's there. Maybe I should have. Well, whatever. I'll find some time to, to discuss the theories while Grizz isn't there to run interference. I swear, every time I ask uh, Mr. Page of anything, she's always there to answer me, and then I get nothing out of him. What a. What a fucking simp. Am I right? Anyways. Without any further ado, I have been Joe Bob, and I'm very peeved. And remember, dislike the video, unsubscribe if you're for some reason subscribed, and leave an nasty comment in the comment section down below. So long, fuckers.